hopefully. So for those who don't know, JAWS uh, stands for Job Access with Speech is a screen reader. And a screen reader is software that a totally blind or nearly blind user would use to access their computer. So in short, um, you know, the really brief description of what JAWS does is it gives you speech output to the Windows operating system. Um, there's a couple of things to, to keep in mind. So if you're using a computer with speech output, um, there's no more mouse. So we're not using a mouse to access the computer. Uh, if, you know, if you have some vision and you're able to use the, the computer with, with, with your vision, uh, you would most likely uh, use what's called screen mag magnification software. So an example of that would be ZoomText. ZoomText is software that makes print on the screen larger. Uh, you have the ability to make your, your mouse pointer larger. You can change the colors and all that kind of stuff. The, the kind of the in-between is, uh, is using Alert. software called um, Fusion. Now Fusion is software that is, is kind of like a combination of using JAWS and using magnification. We use that for people that have progressive vision loss. Uh, vision's getting worse over time. Um, it allows you to use magnification, but also get used to using keyboard commands to control your computer. So I've been using JAWS. Uh, we'll give a little history here. Um, I started, my first computer was an Apple IIe back in 1983. Uh, had a really, really basic screen reader on it called the Echo. Um, I've used, uh, see, I've used DOS computers. I, I jumped into Windows around 1995 with Windows 3.1. <laughs> Um, Kevin, did you, did you ever use, did you ever go that far back? Um, so now we've, we've progressed a long way. We started Windows 3.1 and now we're at Windows 10, which Alert. is the last version of, uh, Windows that's being released. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention before I started here. Um, if you have questions and you're dialed in on the phone and you'd like to ask a question, you can press star nine. Star nine will raise your virtual hand and then uh, Alert. Alert. we'll, we'll uh, unmute you for your question. And feel free to ask questions throughout this. And uh, yeah, if you're on a computer, you'd like to raise your hand, it's Alt Y. Alt Y lets you raise your hand and you can, we'll be unmuted to ask your question. Okay. So, uh, like I say, in Windows 10 is the last version of Windows that's going to be released. Um, they are continuing to make updates to it. Uh, there was an update that came out uh, last Tuesday that I downloaded, and they're fixing bugs and you know adding new functionality. But there there won't be a Windows 11 or 12 or anything like that. Um, so using JAWS with a computer, uh, you're using keyboard commands. So let me kind of explain what that's like. Um, you, have, you have three different aspects going on here. So you have Windows, which is the operating system. That's what you know, runs your email program, your web browser, um, your file browser, that kind of thing. You have JAWS, which sits on top of Windows, and that's your screen reader. That's what's given you the speech output. The share button to activate press space bar. That's what's reading to you. And then you have your applications such as uh, Outlook for email, uh, Edge, Microsoft Edge, which is Microsoft's web browser. You might use Google Chrome or Firefox. Those are the, the three major web browsers. Internet Explorer, which many of us got really familiar with, is no longer being supported. It's included in Windows 10, but it's, you know, security-wise, you really don't want to be using that because Hackers can get right on in there and steal your info. <laughs> um, so a lot of times um, I think people are mistakenly think that to use a computer from the keyboard that you're using JAWS. And really, in fact, JAWS is just what is 
speaking to you. Um, there are JAWS commands um, on to use to control the speech and control different aspects of the screen. But by and large, most of the time you're using Windows commands or um, application commands. So let me give you an example. If I want to go to my desktop and I'm not using a mouse, um, I press the Windows key and the letter M. Windows M, desktop, folder view, list view. I'll slow this down slow, a slower. just in case people are slow. having trouble hearing that. So generally on a desktop keyboard, uh, the Windows key is located between, between the control and the alt keys. So the control key is the bottom left corner key on the keyboard. A little bit different on a laptop. I'm using a laptop here. Um, generally on laptops you have in the bottom left corner, you'll have, usually have control. Uh, next to that, you may have a, a key that's called FN function. And then next to that, you will have Windows, Alt, and Space. So to control Windows, a lot of your commands are going to start with the Windows key. So Windows M takes you to the desktop. Windows T, Windows T task bar. takes you to the taskbar. Windows B, as in boy, Windows B notification Chevron button takes you to the system tray, which is down the bottom right corner. That's where usually your clock is. Windows M like desktop that. folder. Um, so controlling Windows, all your commands are going to usually start with the Windows key. Um, if you know how to use your computer from the keyboard, it doesn't matter what screen reader you're using. It's going to work either way. I could use, I could unload JAWS and do everything, move around the, the oh, around Windows uh, between different applications, et cetera, without speech. Now, I would, it wouldn't be talking to me, but the commands would still work. So one thing I recommend people do, if you want to learn how to use Windows in your site, uh, uh, Windows and or a screen reader in your sighted, is start with Windows commands and, and try to graduate from using the mouse. So do we have any questions so far? I just want to make controls. sure I'm not losing anybody. Title is meeting controls. Uh, okay. Kevin, I do have a question because I know you brought up Fusion. Can you, if you, if you have the Fusion program, can you still be able to use the mouse? Yes. It's Sean, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean. And I'm, I'm okay. you're two are twins. Uh, and then do they make, if I decide I want to get an Apple computer, do they have this particular program or something similar for, for Alert, Apple computers? So um, Mac uses VoiceOver as their screen reader. That's what on the iPhone and the iPad, the Mac, all of their devices. They also have a product called Zoom, which is like their screen magnification software. That's on all Apple devices. Um, there is a Zoom text for the Mac, uh, but there is other than there's no JAWS for the back. There's no Fusion, so that's a totally, uh, you know, different barrel and, of. And Apple you're stuff. saying that they're stopping. You're saying that they're stopping this at Windows 10. If, 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 if they create a Windows 11 or 12 or whatever, they're not going to have anything to support it in the future. No, I'm saying that there is no there is no Windows 11 or 12. Windows 10 is the last operating system okay. that Microsoft is producing. Right. And and one more question. You said Internet Explorer isn't good for us to use because they have security issues. Is, is, Windows, is, is Internet Explorer replaced with Windows Edge? No, Edge replaced Internet Explorer in Windows 10. Well, that's what I'm asking you. So, 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 if, so Windows Edge is a new Internet Explorer? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. I'm just trying to get caught up. I understand. Um, Alert, Tracy raised. Tracy's good Alert, question. Tracy raised hand. Go ahead, Tracy. Hey, um, which um, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, uh, Google Chrome, which one should we use? I, I'm using, I use Internet Explorer and Google. But I keep hearing that Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome and stuff like that, it just doesn't work so well with JAWS. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's a great question. Um, so Internet Explorer should be, you, you really shouldn't be using that. 
Um, you know, if you're just getting on and li looking at YouTube or something along those lines, that's fine. Um, if you still want to use it, but I will tell you that the latest version of JAWS, which is 2020, um, and the latest web browsers work the best with websites. So if there's a website you go to in Internet Explorer and you're like, gosh, I just, this, I can't even, you know, this can't get around. It's just not working right. Try it with Chrome or Edge because that's probably the problem. Um, there's websites I've gone to in Internet Explorer that I open them up in Chrome and, and, um, and or Edge and it works perfect. It works great. <laughs> so um, just keep in mind that the modern web browsers and screen reader combos are, they're optimized for the new code that uh, websites are using. Um, and like Facebook, um, there's a mobile version of Facebook that a lot of blind users use just because it's less busy. It's, it doesn't have as much content on the screen, so it's a lot easier to use. So that would be, that's uh, the web address is m.facebook.com. So it's basically the mobile version of Facebook. I'm not talking about the app. I'm talking about the actual website. So, but if you go to facebook.com with uh, JAWS 2020 and say Microsoft Edge or Chrome, it works really well. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Um, uh, Facebook would be another good tutorial for y'all to teach. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll do that because um, I use Facebook quite a bit, um, both on the phone and on the on the computer. I mean, it's completely usable. <clears throat> and um, then it's it's best if we switch to Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. Okay, so Chrome for sure. Um, Microsoft Edge just came out with an update about a month ago, and basically uh, they redesigned Microsoft Edge, the, the kind of like the motor, what's underneath, uh, what Edge uh, is based on now is Chrome. So they're using Chrome to um, control Edge, basically. That's a roundabout way of saying it. It works really well. I really like it. Um, in fact, I've been using it probably about 99% of the time. Every once in a while, I'll go to Chrome for, you know, one reason or another, but I've set it as my default and yeah, it, it works really well. Microsoft Edge, you mean? Yes. Okay. Okay, so has lowered hand. hopefully everybody understands about using the, the Windows commands. So, you know, whether you're using a screen reader or not, if you're on the computer right now, if you were to press the Windows key and the letter M, Windows M desktop. it would take you to the desktop. Um, when I'm on the desktop, I can use my arrow keys to move around the desktop, to move around the different icons. So Dropbox, 4 of 12, JAWS 2020, 3 of 12, Recycle bin, 2 of 12, etc. 1 of 12. So you'll notice it's as I'm moving up there, it's reading the name of the icon I'm on, and then it's saying like one of 12, two of 12. So that's just means that that's the, that's the number of the item in, on the screen. Recycle bin, two of 12, JAWS 2020, three of 12, Dropbox, four of documents, shortcut, Amazon.com on Zoom, seven of 12. Now, if I, if I want to open an item, we'll go up to JAWS Recycle. Okay, well, two things here. Um, so I can use the arrow keys to move around the screen. Also, I can use what's called first letter navigation. So if I just press the first letter of an item, say Z, Z zoom, seven it's going to jump right to zoom. So if I know what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to go to, I can just press the first letter, R. R, recycle bin, two of 12. Takes me right there. Now, if I want to open an item, it's there's no clicking, so I'm not, I'm not going to use my mouse to click on anything. I'm just going to press the enter key. So, uh, let's see. Enter. Recycle bin. Items view list box. Items view multi-select list box. Not selected. Ramble. And so it opened up my recycle bin. I'm going to close this now. Alt F4. And the way I did that is I used the, the universal keyboard command for closing an icon, an application. It's Alt F4. So the function keys, generally M, on a desktop keyboard, at the top row, the very top row, top left corner, you have escape. And then to the right of that, you have your function keys and those are arranged in sets of four. So you would have F1, F2, F3, F4, a little space, 
5, F6, F7, F8, space, F9, F10, F11, F12. Uh, a little bit more, a little closer together on a laptop keyboard. Um, I actually prefer a laptop keyboard over a desktop keyboard. It's just I've used laptops primarily over the last 20 some odd years and I just find it faster. So if I recycle, I'll open this recycle bin again. Enter. Recycle bin if items. If I want to close this, I press Alt. Alt F4. F4. Alert. Lighthouse plus one. Eight. And it takes me back to, um, takes me back. Well, sometimes it will take you back to the desktop. And sometimes it won't. Title is. So right now I'm kind of like in a no man's land. Now let me explain something else that maybe I didn't really touch on. When you're using a computer with speech output, you have to tell the computer, you have to, you have to let the computer know what part of the screen you want to access. So if you're using a mouse, you can see everything on the screen and you can go up and click on particular items. Um, but if you're using uh, JAWS or another screen reader to access the computer, you have to first tell the computer, hey, I want to access the desktop. So for example, if I want to move around my desktop, I got to press Windows M. Windows M, desktop. And basically what that does is it minimizes all your applications, puts them down at the taskbar on the bottom and puts you on the desktop. Now, even though you can see different parts of the screen visually or not see them, you still have to be able, you first have to tell the computer, this is what I want to move around and access. So I, like, like I did there, I did Windows M um, and now I can use my arrow keys Just 20, 20. or my first letter navigation R, recycle. to move around to the icons I want. Now say I wanted to go to the start menu. Um, get to the start menu. The, the easy way um, is just to press the Windows key by itself. Remember, Windows key is right to the left of your Alt key. So if I press Windows, search box edit computer braille. It drops me right into that search box. And um, you know the nice thing about Windows is there are multiple ways to do the same thing. So I can either um, I can either go to my desktop. Um, go to the recycle bin and open it there. Or let's see, let's type in R E R C, C, C recovery Y Y recovery C L storage settings C, E storage settings system settings press right us recycle bin app press yep. right us. So typed in recycle, hit the down arrow. So the first item I land on, I enter, enter. recycle bin and items view it takes me right there. So Alt F4 you got a mul multiple ways Windows, Windows to do M, the same thing in Windows with a speech, uh, a screen reader. Now, something else to keep in mind, everything I've done so far has been using Windows commands. I really, for the most part, haven't used one JAWS command yet. So you might be asking, what is a JAWS command? What, is, what does that do, do? Okay, so the first example I'm gonna give you is, uh, well, the first thing I should probably mention as well is to use a JAWS command, use what's called the JAWS key. Um, on a desktop keyboard, the JAWS key is gonna be the zero on your keypad. So the keypad on the, like the little 10, 10, uh, 10 key keypad on the right end of your keyboard, the zero is the bottom left corner key of those set of keys. It's usually larger wider than the other keys on the key on the keypad. So that's your JAWS key. Now I'm using a laptop and I set my keyboard set to laptop in JAWS. Um, and that does two things. So I do have, I don't know if you can see my keypad here. I moved my camera down a little bit. Um, I have a keypad on my keyboard on my laptop keyboard. So I can do the JAWS key either from the zero or the caps lock key is also my JAWS key. And just what that means is basically that you can use the caps lock or the zero in combination with other keys to, to do JAWS commands. So the first example I'll give here is to read Alert. the title bar. So the title bar is the, it's the top of the screen. It's what reads 
It's what tells you what application you're in, where you are on the computer. So right here, I'm on the desktop. I press the JAWS key, and I'm going to use the zero on the keypad, and the letter T. Title is desktop one. And it says title is desktop one. So it's reading me, telling me you're on the desktop. If I go over here, meeting controls, new share button. If I go over here to Zoom and I hit the JAWS key and the T. Title is meeting controls. And it says meeting controls. If I'm in Outlook and I press the JAWS key and T, it's going to say Outlook. Everybody following along? Anybody got any questions? Bob has a question. Go ahead, go ahead Bob. Bob. Oh, on the desktop keyboard, we call that the insert key. It is the zero, but you have to have num lock off. And in all the instructions that have to do with JAWS, it's always called the insert key or the JAWS key. Yeah, it's, you know, I've heard a lot of different descriptions in the old days. Um, it was referred to as the insert key. Um, you'll hear insert, you may hear JAWS. Um, it, it, it varies. Um, some keyboards, like a desktop keyboard, ha you have your six pack keys, which are right above the arrow keys. And so there is an insert on there as well. That's the, usually the top left corner key of the six pack keys. So if you have a desktop keyboard and you find your arrow keys, which are normally, they're like a in shape of an upside down T and they're between your main keyboard and your keypad. So if you find your up arrow and then slide your finger up, you'll have a set of keys that called the six pack keys. And um, the top left corner key of those, that, that key set is your insert. So you can use that as well, Bob's right, to um, use that as a, as a JAWS key modifier key. Any other questions? Alert, Bob Barnes has lowered hand. Bob, you there? Oh. Okay, well, I'll move on. So in all of this, uh, you know, using Windows M to go to the desktop, um, Alt F4 to close a program, those are both Windows commands. That works regardless of what screen reader I'm using. Um, I've used the JAWS key, the insert or zero on the keypad in the letter T, Title is meeting control. And that reads me the title bar. So that's a JAWS command. Um, if you don't have a screen reader loaded, or if you don't have JAWS loaded, that key, that, that would not work. That wouldn't do, if you press that on your computer, it wouldn't do anything. Um, but the nice thing, and I always tell people this, if you learn how to use Windows, and you know how to use Windows from the keyboard, it doesn't matter what screen reader you use. You can use Narrator, which is built into Windows. It's the screen reader that comes with Windows. It's narrator is not like JAWS. Um, it works really well, but it's it's has different commands, different keyboard commands. If you use JAWS, you use NVDA. That's a different screen reader that's out there. Um, it doesn't matter what which one of those you use. If you know how to use Windows from the keyboard, it'll work just fine. So let me give, uh, let's see here. Let me do something here. So Search by Word, Word, app, press right, enter. You there, Becky? Opening Word. Document, one word, edit. Hello, Rebecca? Yes. Okay, it's a word, I need, word document. I, okay, I'm going to need your eyes here. Okay. Because I'm going to do something here. I'm going to turn JAWS off for a okay. second. Um, Unloading JAWS. Okay. So I turned JAWS off. I don't have any speech right now, but am I still in Word? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do something here. I'm in Word and I'm going to press Control B and I'm going to type my name. And that should be bolded. Yes. Okay. So if you have vision, you can see that. Uh, I type my name and I press control B, which is kind of a universal command that works in Word, it works in Excel, it works in Outlook, and that stands for bold. Um, 
if I do control U, that should be underlined. Yes. So control U is underlined. These are, these are more, uh, more like application commands, but they are kind of universal. So like I said, they work in different places. And these are all keyboard commands. It doesn't matter since I don't have JAWS loaded right now, they still work. Okay, so let me pull JAWS back up. Maybe, <laughs> there we go. JAWS Home Use Edition, document one word. Okay. Sean. Y'all hear, hear my JAWS? Yes. Okay, good, thanks. Home. Yes. All right, so I'm in Word and I've pulled JAWS back up. Um, in Word, I can use my up and down arrows to move through. Lighthouse, Sean Keen. The different things on the screen. Um, I can, uh, here's, here's another JAWS command. So we talked HS. earlier, um, you know, we've, we've learned, learned basically one JAWS command, that's Windows T, it reads the title of the, the program. Title is document one word, print view. Tells me there I'm in Word. Um, here's a second one. Um, visually, everybody can see that, yeah, this line of text is bolded. Um, but if you can't see it and you wanna learn a little bit more about what's, what is here on the screen, um, I'm going to press the JAWS key and the letter F and listen closely. Let's slow this down a little bit. Slow, slower. Bolded, 11 point, default on default, delivery, normal style, line spacing, one line, paragraph formatting, aligned left, outline level, body text. A lot of information there. You found out that this was bolded, the, uh, the font type was Calibri, a lot of stuff, a lot of inform information there. If I, if I go down a line to the, where I wrote Lighthouse. Lighthouse. I press the JAWS key and the letter F. Single underline, 11 point, default on default, Calibri. And the same thing. We find out that, yes, it's underlined. So you're able to get information by using a JAWS command about the kind of text on the screen. Um, you know, JAWS is kind of is your eyes. It's, it's telling you about what you're seeing. So here, I'm going to go ahead and press Windows M. And I'm going to get back to the desktop. Windows M, desktop, folder view. Back on the desktop now. Um, one of the most popular commands people always ask once they start using a screen reader is how do you shut this thing up? <laughs> and that's pretty simple. It's the control key. So um, if you're using a, a computer with speech, you press control, it's gonna silence the speech. And on voiceover on the Mac, if you press control, it silences it. And then if you press control a second time, it unsilences it. And that's not the case on the computer. You still have to Use another command to get the speech going. So, we have any questions? Okay. Um, let me show you one more uh, Windows command. Um, and then I might get on a website just so you can kind of see what JAWS is like using a, a web browser. Um, I have a couple of applications open here. And this is a window, this again is a Windows command. So if you're using a computer right now, you could use this command. And regardless of having a screen reader open or not, it would still work. So it's the Alt tab, it's the Alt key and the Tab key. And what it does, so I press, I press and hold down the Alt key, and then I start pressing the Tab key. Document one word, meeting controls. Inbox scheme at lighthouseof.org, volume, mixer, speakers, connects, and zoom. And as I press the tab key with the alt held down. JAWS home use. 77 reminder S. Ooh. List view. Get rid of that. Escape. Um, as I Doc meeting press control. alt and tab, scheme, volume, mix, zoom. it moves me between all of my open programs. JAWS home use. And when I get to the program I want to open or I want to land in, I just release the alt. JAWS home use. Drop me right there in the JAWS window. Um, so I'm press Windows M. Windows M. Oops, it didn't work. So I'm gonna do it again. Sometimes that happens. I don't know, it's a little bug or something, but every once in a while I'll press Windows M and it doesn't do anything. Title is. It doesn't take me to the desktop, so I'll press it again. Windows M, desktop, folder. Take me to the desktop. That, that actually um, 
I had somebody ask me that recently. They said, oh, well, I did everything you said. I, I pressed Windows M and I, then I tried to move around and, and nothing happened. You know, it, it didn't, it, I wasn't on the desktop. I said, yeah, sometimes that happens. And Alert, um, Bob Barnes. Bob's, Alert, let me, let me Bob this. Barnes Bob, raised hand. Question. Um, you know, if the first time, if you don't hear desktop, you know, if you're, if you press Windows M and you don't hear it say desktop, then do it again. Windows M desktop. Because yeah, that's, that's what you got to hear. All right. Uh, Bob had a question. I tend to use Windows D instead of Windows M most of the time. I find it uh, is, works a little more reliably. Okay. Well, that's a good point. Um, and let me talk about that real quick. So Bob's saying Windows D to move to the desktop. And there's a Alert. difference Bob between Barnes those two commands. JAWS of document one word. All right. So I'm back document. in Word. And I used Alt-Tab until I got to Word. So the difference between all Windows, Windows M minimizes all of your applications and puts you on the desktop. Um, once you're on the desktop, you can keep hitting Windows M and you're not going anywhere. The difference is with Windows D, Windows D is a toggle. So if I press Windows D here, Windows D, folder view, list view, recycle. It takes me to the desktop. Now the cool thing is if I press Windows D again, Windows D, document one word, edit. It takes me back to Word. So Windows D is a toggle. It'll take you back and forth between the application you were in and the desktop, whereas Windows M will just minimize everything and, and put you there. We got any questions? Alert, one eight one seven seven zero alert. Uh, one eight one seven. Anthony. Sean, I have a question. Okay. What if your What if your jaws is muted and you can't hear and you keep hitting the same control? Could it be possible because you're muted and you that, wouldn't know it? That does happen. Um, uh, starting around jaws. Uh, so, like I said, the latest version of jaws is jaws twenty twenty. I think it was in Jaws 2018. Alert. Tracy has left the meeting. Uh, Alert. They Tracy. made it to where if your computer is muted and you load Jaws, it unmutes it. Because that was a big problem. <laughs> a lot of that, in, in my opinion, that should have been in Jaws 1. <laughs> That's, uh, okay. you, and, that and, happened and, to me many times over the years. <laughs> I know I probably want to drive you to drink, but I do have another question. If you, how, how do you, if you silence the audio, how do you, because I know you said it, but I didn't hear what it was. What, what key do you hit to, to reactivate the audio so you can hear what you're doing in um, Windows? So control just silences what is currently being said. Lighthouse. Right. As soon as you press another key, like I'm in Word here. Sean. So I, I let it say Sean, and then I hit control. But if I just arrow down, Lighthouse, Sean Keen. It's going to reread. Sean Keen. What? Uh, now, if, if I want it to reread where I am without having to move, without having to, like, say, hit the down arrow and the up arrow to go back to the line I'm on, I can press the JAWS key and the tab key. Sean Keen. And it's going to reread what was just spoken. But yeah, you just press another key. You just press either command or do something else, and it'll, it'll keep talking. It just. The Sean, Sean. It just you press that control. It just silences right then. Okay, so 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 basically, if you hit control and then control again, it's not going to activate the audio. No. Okay. Good stuff. Um. Alert close. one eight one seven seven zero seven six. Close word here. Alt F4, file name, Alt N. Yep. Nope. Title is. There's one, there's a perfect option there. I'm not at the desktop. I closed word. Title is. I hit and hit and jaws in the T and it's just saying. Title is. Title is nothing. <laughs> so I press Windows M. Windows M, desktop, folder. There I am back on the. Um, Back on the screen, back on the desktop here. Okay, so let's let's pull up a website and just give you an idea of what alert one eight one seven two four seven alert one eight one seven two four seven zero five five alert Joyce. I have a question. Yes. Um, is there a sheet 
with all the hot teas listed on it. <laughs> there is. <laughs> there is. Um, and, and I can email that to you if you like. Um, or if you get on Google and do a search for Windows hotkeys, Windows keyboard uh -huh. command, you'll find it that way. But I have a real useful one that uh, you can either get all the JAWS commands or the at least the basic JAWS commands. You don't need to know everything. Um, oh, okay. In general, really, there's maybe 10 keyboard commands that I use every day. Um, Alt-Tab, Windows M, Windows D, Alt-F4. Those are all Windows commands. Um, okay. I thought they were special in, in JAWS. Yeah. So now, like I said, they, you know, there's a difference. There's JAWS commands, which that would be like the Windows T. Title is desktop. Where it reads the title bar. Uh, maybe Windows Tab, where it re repeats where you're at. Folder view, list view, recycle. Uh, those are all JAWS commands. But the you know, like the Alt Tab, Alt F4, that's all Windows commands. E H 11 of 12. Does that help? Yes, I got here late, and so I missed part of this. And Jerry no problem. I went and, walking. Um, if Rebecca, if you want to put in the chat box my email address, it's skeen at lighthousefw.org. Anybody's welcome to email me, and I'll uh, send you a list or help okay. you out one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you like. Yeah, I'll put that in there. Thanks. All right, let's go to Ed. Alert. Amazon dot Amazon. O E H eleven of enter. New tab Microsoft Edge app bar. And I'll just put in. Oh, Google supports auto complete. Google Microsoft Edge search region search. And search edit alert. Google. Do I have another question? No, that was me putting your email in the chat. Okay. Link about Google. All right, so I'm on Google. Um, Google. I used a Windows command to move to the top of the screen. And this is something you can use in Word and Outlook and your email, wherever you want. But it's Control Home. And Control Home will take you to the top, either the top of a document, top of an email, um, whole home to go to the top. Link out search. Control in to go to the bottom. Google. So I'm at the top of this website. Um, if I press the down arrow, hey Rebecca, I think somebody's unmuted there, possibly. There you go. Um, if I press the down arrow, it's going to read one line at a time as I move down the website. Now, something to keep in mind here is if you're using JAWS and you're on a website, what you hear and what someone sees on the screen are totally different. Um, a lot of times you'll be moving around the screen and you'll ask somebody, hey, what's it say right here? And they're like, where? <laughs> so there's like no, there's not like a, at least there, there hasn't been in the past. Um, I think there is actually a way to turn it on to where people can see where you're at, but by default, uh, where you are on a website and what's visually on the screen are two di different things. So as I down arrow through this website, you will hear different items spoken. So let's go down. Link about. So we heard link about. Link store. Link store. Link Gmail. So JAWS is telling you the, the type of item you're on. So we're on links. All of these are links. Link images. Google Apps button collapsed. Oh, there's a change. Google Apps button collapsed. So it says Google Apps button collapsed. And that's just telling you that, yeah, this is a button. And underneath this button, if you were to activate it. Space, Google, Microsoft Edge, Google Apps button collapsed, expanded, account list. Aha, now we have Google Apps button expanded. So link sign in, Google Apps link sign list of 14 items, link account, link search. I have different options under here. Um, a couple of things as I'm moving here. Link, list. link sign in. Okay, so we got link sign in. List of 14 items. List of 14 items. That's not written on the screen, but that's JAWS telling you that, hey, these next few items you're going to go through, these are arranged in a list. So more informational, information, or informational speech about what 
types of items you're moving through on the screen. Link account, link search, link maps, link YouTube, link play, link news. Okay. So if I was to keep arrowing down to move around this website, that would take a long time. Um, I'm going to go back to the top now. Google. And there's keyboard, there's keys on the keyboard, um, A through Z, that stand for different elements on the screen. So an element might be a link, might be a heading. Uh, you know, generally a heading is larger print it's on the screen. They, a lot of websites use it to separate sections of the page. Um, if I wanted to move to like an edit field, like a, a search field where I could type in a search, I could press the letter E. So let me do that. Search edit combo. Okay, so you hear it said search edit combo. That was me pressing the letter E, it took me right there. I can press enter now. Enter search region, search edit. Might have heard a little beep there. Now that, that's telling me that now you're in what's called forms mode. This is a JAWS feature. Um, if you're on a edit field or some type of form field, uh, generally pressing enter will get you into the edit field where you can type. So I'm going to type in Dallas Cowboys. Typed in Dallas Cowboys. If I press enter here, enter. It takes me out of the search. Dallas Cowboys Google search Microsoft Edge. Dallas and Dallas. And it loads the search. Okay, so now I got a lot more information on the screen and I'm better able to show you, um, you know, how you can move around using JAWS. These are all JAWS commands to move around except for Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I press control home to get to the top of the document. Before I move on, I just want to ask, anybody have any questions, comments? I hope Alert. I'm, being, Bob Barnes raised hand. Hopefully I'm being clear. I don't want to confuse anybody. I think Bob uh, has a question. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, it can depend on your settings. The default settings in JAWS is forms mode comes on automatically when you hit that edit field. Yes, sir. That's, and that, I turned that off. <laughs> right. And uh, it's real easy for us. We're trying to uh, give people pointers. We can forget that our settings might be different from theirs. And, and uh, uh, so, you know, yeah. if, if you experience something different from, uh, from what one of us describes, uh, it can be cause of that. Very good point. Um, by default, um, forms mode, I believe, is set to automatic. Alert. Bob Barnes has lowered. And what that would, what the difference of what that would do is if you open uh, Edge or you go to google.com, it automatically puts you into the search field because they basically assume that if you're going to a website, you, you know, like that, that you want to search for something. So um, if I had forms mode set to default, when I loaded Google, it would have went beep and put me in the search field. Um, and, I, and just my personal choice, I don't, I don't, I don't like always like that to happen because I might go to a website that just has a search field on it and it automatically pops me in there and I don't, I don't want to be in there. So, okay. Good point, Bob. Thanks. Um, that was so I'm at the top of the field for this, uh, Google search here. And like I said, if I, you know, if I was to down arrow, heading link, skip link, accessibly alert, Google apps, but link, sign in, link graphic. If I keep arrowing down, it's going to take a long time to get to my search results. So thankfully, there's a quick way to do it. So if I now press the letter H, and that stands for heading, accessibility links, heading level one. So there's the first heading. It says accessibility links. I'm going to press it again. Search modes, heading level one. Search results heading level one. Okay, the third press of the H gets me to the search results. Now that's a lot of space, a lot of ground I just covered really quickly. Um, the other nice thing is in Google, each search result is also a heading. 
So if I press keep pressing H here. Top stories heading level two. Staff writers pick C B Ed Rusher and final mock heading level three lit mailbag. A different role for Jalon Smith. Heading level three lit doc of the day when the 88s get together heading level. Because so each time I press the letter H there, it's moving me to a different heading. It's also skipping a lot of things. Alert E M S A D M G G seven X V seventy three T J M V T has joined the so I'm going to press Shift H. Now, if I add Shift to any command here, any of these keyboard commands, so Shift H is going to go backwards. Mailbag, a staff writer's pick up stories heading level two. Okay, so now I'm going to arrow down. Heading level three, link staff writer's pick CB, Ed Rusher, and final mock. And we heard that just a moment ago. That was the first search result. Link Dallas Cowboys dot two hours ago. Ah, so we didn't hear this. Heading level three link mail back a different role for Jalon Smith. Link Dallas Cowboys dot four hours so ago. So we're getting, so now as we arrow, we're hearing what all we missed. Now, what I like about going by headings is Staff right. I can just quickly Alert. Mindy move. Keen has left Mailbag, a doc of the day when the Twitter results had the different search results. Dallas Cowboy web results alert. Tracy has mailbag, a Dallas Cowboy. And find the what I want to, you know, what I want to go to and then just press enter to activate it. So that's moving by headings. Dallas. Um, I think the other command I showed earlier was the E for the edit field. It takes me, it skips all the stuff at the top here and just goes search edit combo. Dallas Cow Boom, right there. Um, other useful commands I can use on websites. Uh, so E is for edit, H is for heading, B is for button. Clear button. Search by voice button. Clear button. I press space here. Space. Search region. Search edit combo. Computer. It clears out my search. Enter. Now something you might be hearing my computer say is computer braille. And the reason for that is I'm using a, I have a braille display down here at the bottom of my keyboard as well. So not only am I using uh, speech, but also I have Braille access on my computer. So um, if you don't have a Braille display, um, you wouldn't hear that. It wouldn't say that. Um, let's see here. Okay, it's about one o'clock. Um, and I'm interested to hear you know, questions, comments, um, if you want me to do something or show you how something works, be glad to. But let's alert one eight one seven seven zero alert one eight. I think that's uh, probably Anthony has a question. Title is. Not Anthony. Jaws home. Sure, I do have a. I do have a question. With Windows M. Yes, sir. Whether you're using Jaws or um, Zoom or whatever. Can you go in there and customize what you want to, to, to fit your needs, or you need to call call the software provider to help set, set that up for you? No, it's pretty. Um, so using like Zoom Text, there's ways to customize that. That's pretty pretty user friendly. Um, you can, like I said, with Zoom Text, that's screen enlargement software. You can change your mouse pointer. There's all different sizes and colors you can change it to. You can have it just show black on, you know, the diff you know, like your, you can invert your colors to where it's, you know, re like reverse video. Um, when I'm in an application. Uh, Meeting controls. Dal Jaws Home, Dallas Cowboys. All right, so I'm back here Virtual on PC cursor. Microsoft Edge. Dallas. Here's a Jaws command. If I press the Jaws key, Remember that's the zero or insert key on the keyboard and the letter V. Quick settings and set dialog, search box edit. I get to a box of a, a, a option here called quick settings. So I'm gonna press tab. Preview. And just know that tab is another Windows command. If you're in what's called a dialog, that's um that could be a settings screen. Uh, really just about anywhere in Windows. If you press the tab key, it's gonna move you from left to right across the screen and adding shift tab reverses that so you move backwards okay so I press tab once and I'm in a list of these are JAWS specific settings to um, search to this application I'm in Microsoft Edge now Bob brought up a good point earlier and he was talking about forms mode so I'm in the search box I'm gonna type in F O R M Form, forms, options, one of eight search results. 
eight search results list box forms. And now I'm just down arrowing and I'm looking for auto forms mode manual forms options oh. virtual cursor options. So this says auto forms mode and it's set to manual. So that means I'd have to press enter to get into a search field instead of JAWS automatically doing it for me. Now let me show you something real quick here that this is super handy. So from the search field, I typed in forms, I down arrow to I found the search result I want. And there are a lot of settings in here. It's all you can control. JAWS is <laughs> nothing if it's not um, configurable. I mean, you can turn all kinds of stuff on and off and have it suited to your particular, you know, preferences. Okay, so I'm on three view eight search results list box auto forms mode manual. I'm on this command here. I'm gonna press tab. Read only edit. This feature determines if JAWS will automatically switch between forms mode and virtual mode when working in applications such as IE, Firefox, Help, so Acrobat, etc. When set to auto, you will be able to navigate the controls with the arrow keys where input is needed. Alert. So EM. it is. It, it's a help. So for each one of these commands in here, it goes through and tells you what it's for and how you configure it. Eight, sir. And form fee, forms mode off when forms options, person, auto forms mode manual, form field, so me search box app, black tree, left, select and copy, read only state announce, forms options, level two. I'll just go to some for random. Level here. one, general option, level, smart navigation mode off. Okay, so I'm just going to hit tab here. I actually don't have any idea what this does. Read only edit. Smart navigation offers a more efficient way to navigate in web-based applications, tables, and forms. When set to controls, most controls are treated as single units when navigating by character or word, like moving through a menu bar with right and left arrow. Yeah, I have no idea what that's for. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Alert. a perfect Two example of raised you can go through the search results in here and Alert. It'll one tell you one seven seven zero. Alert. what they one do eight. and what they're for. That's like somebody has a question. Escape. Yes. I think we're trying to unmute each other. Hold on. There we go. Go ahead, Kevin. All right. Some folks out there may be wondering, um, is it possible to change the voice of the JAWS? Oh, Kevin. Escape. You may be trying to confuse everyone. Right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, Amazon. Yeah, it is. There is. Um, and it's quite very, um, there's quite a few choices here. Let's see what I have. Select the voice profile dialog. So I'm using a JAWS command here. This gets me to what's called voice profiles. And I have a couple different choices in here. Microsoft Mobile Factory, Sappy 5X Factory, and 3 first or 6. Ones, these are voices that are built into Windows. Um, they come, there's what, what uh, Windows Narrator uses. That's the screen reader that's built into Windows. Sappy 5 Vocalizer Expressive, 5 of 6. But I have the Vocalizer Expressive voices, and some of these might sound familiar if you're an iPhone voiceover user. Folder view, list view, Amazon.com online shopping that for electronics. Familiar, Zoom, seven of so, doc, drop. So this is Samantha. This is the voice that is also used on your iPhone. Just 2020, recycle bin, so if two you don't of like 12. That mechanical sounding voice, which is called Eloquence. Eloquence came out in the 90s and it's, um, it does, it doesn't sound human at all, but it is very fast and very, you can make it very fast, and it's very responsive. So, um, what that means is if you're, a, if you're a blind screen reader user, sometimes you'll have, not so much anymore, computers nowadays are so fast that um, you know, it really, you don't have much of a lag, but as you Windows, type, 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 show desktop move button. around the screen, notification, action sent Windows M, Sometimes you'll have a little bit of lag and not with eloquence. Um, sometimes with other voices you will, but select I switch back folder view here. window talk tap no, show desk note show note desktop you move around real quickly. Also, um, the more the more you use speech with a computer, the faster you'll get. Um, Fast, fast, fast. 
Faster, 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 faster. Amazon.com online shopping for electronics apparel. Document shortcut 512. Dropbox 412. Jaws 20, 20, like Chinese to you, but I've used a Jaws for, well, a long time. <laughs> Over 25 years. Recycle bin 212, etc. Jaws drop document shortcut 512. And a lot of times I can speed my speech up to that Start point. Button. Desktop folder view list new document shortcut 512. And use it. And it's a lot more efficient. Um, if you're reading something online or you're writing an email or whatever you're doing, it's just a lot more efficient. The faster you can get using your speech. Slower, slow, slower. I think Kevin is, Kevin, you might use yours faster than I do um, normally, but. Amazon.com online. It, it depends too. Oh, one thing I will add is that, so JAWS lets you configure different settings for different applications. So say there's, um, say like in your email, you want it to be really fast your speech to be really fast. You can, you can set custom settings according to application to where if you load that application, it automatically switched to faster speech. Um, maybe there's some other settings you want on or off. Maybe you want your punctuation to be, um, you want it to read all your punctuation um, where most of the time you, you wouldn't. You can, you can set that kind of stuff. And you can also do that with Zoom text, the screen magnification software. Um, and um, you can have different color settings, different magnification levels, et cetera, um, per application. Let me show you one thing here, one last thing here. Search box edit. FS, FS reader three, app, press right to switch so preview. I went to the Windows start menu by pressing the Windows key. Um, I typed in FS, Frank, Sam. Enter. I'm gonna press enter. FS reader untitled. Now this is called FS reader. This is a built-in um, daisy, what's called a daisy reader. So um, these books are, um, they're basically HTML, but they also include audio um, and everything. So let me show you, I'm gonna press Control J. Control J. Table of contents. And that gets me to the JAWS table of contents. Now here's all of the uh, several chapters, several different books here that give you really the basics of using JAWS. So let me go. Link one introduction and overview. Oh, let me slow the speech down a little slow, more. Slower, um, slower. So I'm in here and I'm gonna move between Alert. the Alice Wyatt books. has joined the link to getting started with JAWS. Link three, working with menus, dialog boxes, and the JAWS startup wizard. Link four, the JAWS user interface and utilities. Link five, introduction to Microsoft okay, so Windows. Here's a book here that we're gonna Enter. open up. I'm Document. Zero five introduction to shift. Is how you either open a program, you activate a link, and introduction to Microsoft. Okay, so I got a book open here. It's called Introduction to Windows. And you remember when I was on the web, when I was in Edge on Google, how I could press the H key and it would move me between the different headings on the screen? Well, I have the same thing in here. Introduction to Microsoft Windows heading level one, the Windows desktop heading level two. And I press H twice, I'm on the Windows desktop. If I down arrow here. We're going to talk now about some of the different parts of the main Windows screen. There are several different pieces that may So I get JAWS reading it to me, the JAWS eloquence voice. I also- Heading level to the Windows. I've pressed up arrow there to get back to the heading. I can also press the let, uh, uh, this is a, a Windows command. Um, it's generally either for play or print, depending on the application you're in. Um, here it's print. So I'm gonna press control P the Windows desktop. We're going to talk now about some of the different parts of the main Windows screen. There are several different pieces that make up the main Windows screen, so when you... And that's Dan Clark. He's the head of the training department at Freedom Scientific, which is the maker of JAWS, um, Zoom Text, and Fusion. And there's a ton of introduction material here. Control J, um, document. I went back to the cable, table of contents, Control J. Link five, introduction to Microsoft Windows. Link six, using the keyboard to read and edit text. Link seven, introduction to files and folders. Link eight, JAWS help. Alert, Azul Celest iPhone. And there's just a ton of information Alert, one, eight. that's free. This comes with JAWS. It's built into JAWS. Um, so there's all sorts of resources for help. Um, I'll get to your question in just a moment. Um, I did want to mention one other thing here is that if you go to freedomscientific.com and under their menu, they have a, a section called training. 
Um, they have all kinds of webinars. Some of them are paid, but most of them are free. So you can watch videos, you can watch uh, webinars on using JAWS, either for basics, either, you know, like how to use Word with JAWS or how to use Outlook with JAWS. So you can access that type of information. Um, like I said, a lot of them are free. There's also a JAWS certification. And this is, eh, this is more for, you know, your students or someone that is really needing to use JAWS uh, effectively in school or in college or whatever. But there's something like, it's got, there's a test out there that has like a thousand questions um, from JAWS 2.0 to JAWS 2020. And <laughs> so back about 10 years ago, I went and took that test and it's free to take. You can take it as many times as you want. In fact, it really gives you an idea of how much you know. And at that time I'd been using JAWS since 1995 and I was a pretty good power user and thought I knew a lot more than I did. <laughs> and I took the test and I got like a 70. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so if you're a JAWS user and you want to know how much you know or how much you don't, go take that test. And now I'll take questions, uh, comments, anything. JAWS Hope Dallas Cowboy meeting alert. Anyone? Kevin, you got any suggestions, any thoughts? Alert, Kevin raised hand. Alert, Kevin raised hand. Yeah, Alert, two participants yeah, raised hand. Alert, two participants raised hand. Oh, Alert. Good. It looks like some other folks have some questions. I can, I can shelve my comment, let them go first. All right. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, Bob. Worse than that on the test. <laughs> Say that again. Uh, Sorry, I, missed that. I, I did worse than that on the test. <laughs> it, it's well, kind of humiliating. I thought I knew Jaws. Uh, but I love books, and I want to recommend a, an excellent Windows 10 book here. This is by David Pogue, P-O-G-U-E. Windows 10, The Missing Manual, the book uh -oh. that should have been in the box. And that's on BARD, too, isn't it? EB83406. Okay, and, that, and you said, that's on BARD, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that's a great, that's a great tip there, Bob. Um, I'll tell it's you. It's a little bit dated, but Windows 10 really hasn't changed much as far as the user interface is concerned. Uh, so the book is still an excellent reference. It's, uh, I think it's got four nested levels of headings. It's very organized, uh, very comprehensive. Uh, it's an excellent resource for Windows 10. Right. Thank you. That's true. That's very true. Um, Windows 10 is really a lot like 7. So I don't know what Microsoft Alert. was Bob thinking, Barnes raised 10. but they, Alert. Um, Bob Barnes. they did Windows 7, which Alert. was great. And then they went to Windows 8 and it was, yeah, not so much. And then they did 8.1, which was still, eh, no. And then I think maybe they said, okay, we'll take the best parts of 7 and the few one or two things that were nice and eight and make windows 10. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Comment. Pause share, new share button. New share button. Pause remote control. Pause. Hello, sharing is paused. Report button. Dr. Bottom button alert. Your screen share has been stopped. All right, Kevin, what were you, what were you thinking? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Well, I was just going to add that, you know, I, I started off with computers and assistive software using magnification. I was a zoom text guy for uh, a few years and I did pretty well with that for a while, um, but my vision, you know, is progressive. And so I losing vision 
way that I had, it it made me, you know, more reliant over time on on listening and on relying on the screen reader. But that was a difficult transition for me because I was really, you know, wanting to use the site that I had remaining uh, to to get by. And and when I was in college, in the beginning, especially. I found that it was a challenge because even when I had things magnified on the screen to a, a certain you know level or a certain size, it it would be helpful, but sometimes it would work against me, where you know it would be almost too big. And where that really got difficult for me was when I was required to to write papers in college, and as I remember, I would have the size of the screen up to like a 10 or 10 or more and you know one corner of the document would be visible in the, you know on the screen and then i would have to move the mouse over to get the rest of the document in view and having to edit and having to format and, and write and, and and also there was a question of eye strain you know even though i could see it you know my and i had it magnified sometimes my vision would fatigue and it would plateau and then I would have to step away. So it would limit me in the amount of time that I could spend uh, just uh, you know, doing, doing the work required. And at a certain point I had to ask myself, was the, the juice worth the squeeze? You know, is the vision that I'm using to, to, to do these things, is it worth exerting that, that, that effort and that vision to get these particular tasks done or projects done and I started using the screen reader portion of zoom text at the time because it had a really basic as you know Sean a very basic screen reader or screen echo feature and right. eventually you know I started thinking well you know if if I'm getting accustomed to this voice um, then maybe I could get accustomed to using the, the voice on JAWS. And so I started to use JAWS, um, getting more, like, di dipping my toe into that, into that pond. And I, I found that as I learned more keystrokes and become more confident with it, that I actually could get things done much more quickly than relying on the, the low vision that I had remaining at the time, especially. And so it really in, increased my, my speed, my, my proficiency. And also, you know, I didn't have any eye strain because, you know, hello, I'm relying on key, key commands, key combinations and in tandem with the, 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 the screen reader part of it. So I, I really found that it had uh, benefited me in a lot of ways. And, and now at this point in my life, I'm, as Sean is, I'm totally a screen reader user, and it's it's how I it's how I do my do a lot of of my job and yeah. a lot of things online. Without it, I couldn't do my job. <laughs> right, Kevin? Did you use um, Did you ever use a computer without uh, you know I guess sighted more or less, or did you always use like Zoom text or no uh, using Zoom text? Originally, I did not use Zoom text. That, okay. That's a good question. Um, I guess my vision was such that I could, for uh, a window of time, I could, I could see it without the aid of magnification. Because I, for those of you who don't know, I have retinitis pigmentosa. And that diagnosis happened to me when I was in my later teens. And then my vision got worse as I went into my 20s. But there was a window of time where I didn't use any assistive software. But, you know, eventually my site did worsen and that's where I found assistive software like ZoomText useful. And then from ZoomText, I transitioned into JAWS. So would you say, Kevin, um, you know, it, it's, a lot, it's a lot simpler conversion to go from being a sighted user to a ZoomText user than it is going from a sighted user to being a screen reader user. Certainly, and I'll tell you the, the biggest struggle I had 
was giving up that mouse. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest, <laughs> biggest I really, really, I has. really wanted to use that mouse. You know, my first reflex was to find the mouse on the mouse pad and then, you know, find it on the screen. And having written that as pigmentosa, um, I had, you know, progressively worsening peripheral uh, vision or, or limited field. So I would be looking through a, a, a periscope more or less. And on the screen, there would be, you know, there'd be my, be my mouse cursor, but I'd have to locate it on the screen. And so often what I would have to do is go up to the very top left corner of the screen to find where the cursor's at on the screen, if that makes sense. And uh, it, it was kind of like playing where, Where's Waldo for a little while there. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, was, it was frustrating though, uh, very much frustrating. And, uh, but you know, thankfully I got introduced to um, helpful software like ZoomText and then eventually JAWS. But uh, I, and I had been introduced to JAWS uh, when I was shown or introduced to ZoomText, but I did not want much to do with JAWS. I, yeah, I, really, it, it, hmm. I think Alice has a question, but I, I just want to make this point that it, unfortunately, it's, it's not easy. It is not easy to use a screen reader um, if you're used to using a computer with speech. Oh, with, the, with vision, sorry. Um, but, you know, it, it's like learning anything new. It takes time. Um, and it, it's very very doable it's uh computers have come a long way from when i started using them believe me <laughs> i think alice has a question you are unmuted by host audio Hi, now unmuted sorry. i'm sorry i came in late i couldn't get free to get in here and i wanted to be here bob has taught me a lot of jaws good the thing that throws me the most is all those numbers that rattles out it just, I get lost. But I'm a senior trying to learn JAWS, and I'm laughing here at Kevin saying, not letting go of the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to learn. Unfortunately, my brain doesn't want to hold as much as you young guys. But um, it, it has really been good for me in a lot of ways. I wish I could get a voiceover to work as good as JAWS does sometimes. But um, I want to encourage anybody that that does is trying to learn it that eventually you do learn and I'm learning a, Bob can tell you a little bit at a time my problem is retaining the memory but boy how you all handle those numbers that is what I don't understand I still can't get that in my, my hey I'll tell you a secret is, I type yeah, you like talking talking about like typing the numbers row. Yeah. Yeah. Well, typing the numbers, but listening to Jaws rattle off all the numbers. Yeah. And all the things. A lot of times, I'll go read it one a letter, like letter by letter, or number by number. Um, if it's like a phone phone number or something like that, I think we got another question. Thanks, Alice. Okay. Thank you. From Kevin. Hello, Bob. I think I think that Alice is talking about those situations where Jaws encounters a long a long stream of uh, uh, hex or characters that mm. on on a website that yeah. defines a graphic, and okay. you know we're kind of reluctant to skip over that because there might be something else on that line that we need to hear so we just kind of slog through that mess <laughs> yeah and i think that's the thing alice is talking about that's probably right um and that's i gosh i run through those two and a lot of times i'll skip it and come back to it if i need it if it's if i'm if i go through the page and realize oh, i think i'm missing something i'll go back and check those out but in you know that's probably one of my biggest disappointments um, using the web with JAWS is it's still a challenge. It's not, it, it's like a mystery. It's like you got to go solve a mystery to learn how to use a website because 
They're all different. There's no like universal set. And I admit it's not, it's not at the point that I think it could be. And I, I don't, I don't have the answer, but using the web with the screen is a challenge. It takes some patience. Yeah. And oh yeah. The thing that bothers me the most about it is when I'm working on a, a website and then suddenly it jumps up or down a line when I didn't move it, you know, because something on the screen above this point changed and uh, you know, I'm reading along and then suddenly I'm on the prior line or the next line because the thing's yep. jumping around. Yep. Some pages refresh parts of the page and when that happens, it moves you or uh, there's a few websites I just stopped going to because like the whole page will refresh every 10 seconds. I'm like, ah, oh, I can't <laughs> No. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think Kevin. And there's a setting where you can tell it not to refresh, uh, but that has its drawbacks too. So yep. Yep. It just takes some patience. It does. Thanks, Bob. Kevin. <laughs> oh. I think every time I go to unmute Kevin, he's trying to unmute himself, and so we just mute him again. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Okay. <laughs> We're canceling each other out here. <laughs> um, yeah, the duck tail on Bob's point. You know, I find myself sometimes on a website where it's not fully accessible or it's quirky. So I'll, I'll go to voiceover on my iPhone with the, web, the same website and I'll see if, how it works with that and for some give and take. But certainly I can appreciate the frustration. I mean, Sean and I, you and I have had a situation where we've had to do multiple screen readers on one website or document where it'll be narrator one moment nvda at the next or jaws after <laughs> so yeah and and that brings me to this is sort of not related but I'll, I'll mention it um you know a couple of weeks ago we we had that class where we talked about identification apps and we mentioned ira and so if you're an ira user um you can connect to an agent and use team viewer to um, to have them remote into your computer and help you fill out something or work with a website or whatever. I think I mentioned that I've used it for that kind of thing. Well, I, you know, the, uh, another example for that is I got a PDF document here that I got to fill out for my bank um, to dispute a charge. And the PDF is not the most friendly in the world. So like I'm going to use Ira today to, you know, help me, fill that thing out so I can send it back to them. So, um, yeah, it's a challenge, um, sometimes. So, uh, you know, something I would, I would say if you're a, a sighted user, say like a teacher or someone that's trying to learn how to, how, how to use JAWS, um, start learning windows commands, start learning how to use your computer without the mouse and that'll just make it all that much easier. Because like I said, it doesn't matter what screen reader you use or what screen magnification software you use. If you know how to use Windows from the keyboard, you can use any of them. 